for those of us who deserve better than paper plates and picnic baskets. Ann Morehauser has created these beautiful handcrafted glass dishes and accessories. Annie Glass is her company, and she brings it to Connecticut all the way from California. It's nice to have you here. Thank you. Designer Ann Morehauser has turned tableware into art. Her Annie Glass collectors include Oprah Winfrey, Barbara Streisand, Caroline Kennedy, myself. I'm happy Stephanie to say. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about your philosophy and what Annie Glass is. The idea behind Annie Glass is to add some whimsy and some warmth to the table. It's handcrafted in California. It's dishwasher safe. How did you come up with this concept? Well, I believe that the dining experience should be. Uh, a feast for the eye as well as the stomach, so I want things to be delightful. I saw glass blowing at the beach for the very first time at this amazing event. It was a May Day Raku party up at Waddell Creek. All the different colleges came together and fired ceramics outdoors. And someone showed up with a portable glass blowing rig. And it was a full moon at the beach. And as he was swinging this long four foot blowpipe with the hot glass orb on the end, it just seemed like a dance with the glass as a means of controlling it. It was incredible, you know, so I was like, oh my God, I was mesmerized. I was studying dance and art, and I thought, oh man, that's like the perfect combination of the two of them. It's just been my passion ever since. I'm Annie Morehauser, and I started Annie Glass in 1981, and I make glass tableware, sculpture, and home decor. The product is a slumped glass bowl, more or less, or plate, adorned in gold patterning. Each piece is made to slump into a specific ceramic mold, which is made here on site. Well, we make our product out of sheet glass. The sheet glass needs to be cut to different shapes. Depending on the complexity of the shape, it's either hand cut, cut with a water jet, then the glass is adorned either by hand or by screen printing method. From there, it is then placed into a kiln inside of a mold and then fired to anywhere between 1390 up to 1450 degrees Fahrenheit. They come out the next day and voila, you have an anti-glass product. So this is our Roman antique collection. This is what Annie started with almost 40 years ago. It's all hand cut, hand decorated with 24 karat gold or genuine platinum that we sell all across the country to big department stores, high-end stores, and of course in Santa Cruz County in our community. I have been working at Annie Glass for the last seven years, but on and off my whole life. When we opened Santana Row, it was like, you know, get your boots on the ground running. And now that I'm back in Watsonville, it's really special. I love going to the warehouse every day and being inspired by what it is that we're doing. I think there's a lot of reasons behind why we're so supported by the community. Annie Glass sparks joy for so many people. I think it's such a wonderful story of how Annie created her business really from nothing. She started downtown Santa Cruz. She would have these big factory sales where people would line up. And then over the years, she's grown it to be in these big department stores and hotels and in the Smithsonian all throughout the US. But it's all made here and people really have gotten to see how it's grown over the years. She came out from the East Coast and, and learned how to make glass on the beach in Davenport and then instilled this entire community of friends and artists who inspired and helped, you know, pave her path into success. I was raised in my mom's shop, her glass shop in the Sash Mill, when she was just figuring it all out in the 80s and started to develop her business and just got bigger and bigger and I just 
kept breaking glass more and more as a child and, and she was always pushing me to try everything creatively. There was no like, you're gonna go be a doctor. It was like, you wanna go paint graffiti? Well, don't get caught, you know? She was cool about stuff, so. We don't have to get a problem because it's a really dangerous uh, word. We have to drive really carefully about that. Perfect. Working in glass, there's sort of this set notion that glass making is done in this very certain and specific way. And I found that the process here kind of breaks all the rules. Uh, we do a lot of things that people in the art glass community would just be blown away that we get away with it. And it works. So, you know, if it works, then it's a tried and true method. One thing that makes this place unique is the fact that we do use float glass, which is basically window glass you'd find in your home or in a building. And we heat it up very rapidly to peak temperature, about you know, less than two hours. Glass doesn't like to heat up really quickly. And basically this has to do with how much it expands when it heats up and how much it contracts when it's cooled. If we were to even heat this glass up too rapidly, it would explode. Uh, my job entails of uh, everyday running of the production, um, making sure all the lists are done and getting our 300 and 400 pieces out daily. If I remember correctly, we got into a lot of battles, but that was just because of me caring for, for Annie Glass, and of course Annie caring about her business. Um, so there was a lot of head button, but it was all for the benefit of Annie Glass. She always challenges us. Uh, there's always, hey, what if you do this? Even though it's an idea outside the box, it'll make us think, it'll make me think, and say, maybe it could be possible. I am the manager of customer service and shipping. I've been here for 31 years, as of last month. A lot of it has to do with Annie willing to push the envelope and saying, this is what I'm seeing, this is what I want. I want you guys to do it. And they may think we just can't, but of course we try and it works. I took glass blowing at the College of San Mateo. They just had it for the summertime, so I signed up for that. And um, that's what I did. And that's when I became a transfer student in 1977 um, to the California College of Arts and Crafts, as it was called then, in Oakland. And Marvin Leposky was the head of the program there, and he had a great reputation for successful students. He left a legacy of really highly successful Bay Area glass artists. In the Bay Area, there was an organization, but it was really only for men who blew glass. And it was pretty limited, and I, I couldn't, they wouldn't let me join. So I kind of felt like, hmm, all right, I'm going to name my company Annie Glass. <laughs> I'm going to lay it on thick <laughs> that it's a woman. I, I had some pivotal moments growing up when I was going to be on the track team. And I just love that freedom, you know, that moment I just be like up and over, you know, and up and over. And there's that wonderful cadence and the exhilaration, you know, when you're good at it. Once you get in that rhythm, it's like nothing can stop you. At the last minute, they told me I couldn't be on the track team. And the coach takes me aside and he says, I'm sorry, Annie, you are really good at hurdles but we, we can't have girls on the team. But we do want you to be in the color guard because with legs like those, you should show them. That was just such a wallop, you know? It just felt so unfair and I'd been practicing for months with them. And that was a galvanizing moment right then and there because it was like, okay, that's it. If I had listened to him, I never would have done anything. My mother was really something. She always worked. Um, she was really talented. Um, she was from Italy. She was an immigrant, grew up with nothing in the Depression, was an orphan, came to this country with her uh, mother's family. And so she was really tough. She was really concerned about me studying art. You know, I guess she just thought I was going to be in a garret, you know, <laughs> somewhere. And um, she was concerned, but she said, if you really love it, you'll make it work. She died um, when I was expecting my daughter. 
um, two weeks after the big earthquake here. You see the dramatic evidence of that behind me. This is the Pacific Village pedestrian shopping mall in downtown Santa Cruz. I think a total of about 40 buildings have either been totally or partially destroyed. Again, all of them the old unreinforced masonry type that dating back. Like many businesses in Santa Cruz, the 1989 earthquake hit us really hard, particularly being a glass studio. There was a lot of broken glass as a child. One of my first memories was the, the earthquake in 89 and coming to my mom's shop and there was like a two-story pile of glass that had just, everything had broken. We had to use a backhoe to get it out. It was so, we were, it was filled this high. I was pregnant with my daughter. My son was two years old. We thought maybe we should move back to New Jersey. You know, <laughs> like this is bad. This is really bad. How can you be in the glass business on a fault line? Like what a stupid idea that is. And I stepped on a piece of glass at a really young, you know, I was like two, two and a half. And I remember being in the hospital because they were like taking this big piece of glass out of my foot. I called it the big chill moment when I had to review my whole life choice and life plans. Maybe it's not a good idea to be in this business. Maybe I should just go back to New Jersey, start over. We had to be resourceful and scrappy um, with no money. And I was on food stamps and tried everything I could to get through. I didn't start at Annie Glass with anything. <laughs> you know? I would just show up with my truck at Santa Cruz Glass and go in the dumpster. And the guy would come out and say, get out of there, you know, what are you doing? And, and then I said, well, I'm actually making these, these, you know, and I showed him these pieces I was making. He goes, well, that's pretty cool. He goes, well, come here, I think I got something that's scratched. Get out of the dumpster, you know. <laughs> and we had this arrangement, like whenever we had something scratched, I'd just show up, you know. <laughs> I wrote a check not knowing if my first case of glass, would, if that was going to be good or not. They delivered it. It was a ton. They said it was a ton, but it wasn't a ton. It was two and a half tons. They got a crane to drop it on the deck in front of the sash mill, and it just went right through the deck. And I thought, oh my god, you know, I haven't even paid for it. I don't even know if the check is good. <laughs> so they just instantly on their first big shipment of glass, it broke like the whole deck that they, all the neighbors shared and the landlord. and. It was a big fiasco, you know, they are just figuring it out as they were going and... You know, I went on to spend six figures a year with that glass company and they would like to tease me about it and say, yeah, yeah, you know, you gave us a bad check the first time. <laughs> You're not so fancy. I knowingly gave them a bad check, hoping and praying that somehow the money would get there before they cashed it. I asked my mom, hey mom, can I borrow $1,400? <laughs> and she said, no, I don't have the money. So I asked my boyfriend and he loaned it to me. And that's Michael, my, Michael Reinhold, who became my husband, is the father of my children, and he's my first business partner. Michael was a surfer and much more business oriented than I ever was. And so he started doing the business side of it, which was great because we could divide and conquer. We'd go to New York and do the shows and he'd be like, oh, it's great. It's premium. You're going to love this stuff. It's 24 karat gold. You know, he was really, really great. I had gone to a couple trade shows with Michael and he had this huge personality and so people were, you know, gravitate towards him because he was just so, you know, he could laugh loud and, you know, just a, a really great person to be a representative of a company. And he came in and was like, we're going to brand this and we're going to make a business out of this and I'm going to go sell it to everybody I can, you know, and he took Annie Glass from, you know, my mom having one kiln in her little studio to you know, Saks Fifth Avenue, Bergdorf Goodman, Barney's, Gumps, you know, went to New York and sold the glass and, and created this brand of my mom's identity. That was the story of my parents, you know, they were just like, just making it happen with no resources and nothing. They paved their way through golden plates. Michael and I divorced and we um, had to divide property and so I, I bought him out of Annie Glass. But to do that I needed a lot of money <laughs> and so I went to the banks. I remember you know, putting this suit on and saying to the kids, like, okay now, mommy's got a very important meeting. The kids are just not cooperating and finally I'm just, just get in the car. Mommy has to borrow a million dollars today. <laughs> you know, and they're like, okay. <laughs> So we went through a divorce together and then she just fearlessly went out and borrowed a million dollars and bought her factory. So I'm like, how do you borrow a million dollars? And she said, miracle bra. 
And that's all I'm gonna say about that. She's very bright and she's very determined and um, she's very no-nonsense when it comes to business, which is unusual for an artist. I wanted to grow Annie Glass into a national business, and the only way to do that was get out of the West Coast. Um, so it was just a lot of hard work. You know, I was really approaching it as a businesswoman, as an entrepreneur, and as an artist. I feel like she has had to work twice as hard being a woman in business, but she's always done such a good job being our mom. Annie Glass has never taken that spot. We were both doing business. I had a swimwear company at the time. It's a big topic, and it's a big topic today, women in business and having a family, because most women have to be there for their children. They have to be there for their husband. If they, there's a husband, they have to be there for their career and to balance all of that together. Um, big, big items in life. Some of the traits that Annie has that help is having heart because I don't care what you're doing. I mean, you could be growing flowers, you could be making plates, you could be making kites that fly in the sky, but if you're not doing it with your heart, you've lost everything. And that's one thing that I see over and over again with Annie and how she addresses people, how she addresses her family. Um, you can see it in her artwork, and I think it's one of her great qualities. I'd say that the adversity and maybe some of the challenges that Annie's had have come just from being a woman in business, always having to be a little bit better, a little bit stronger, always having to find some way to make that balance. I love what she does, and I love how she gives herself to everyone. When you're in Annie's arms, you're in Annie's arms the whole way, and there's no halfway. And I think it's one of the greatest things of our friendship is that she's always got my back. Michael, who was at that time her ex-husband, or she would say her husband, died very quickly and very suddenly. Annie was named Woman of the Year by the Chamber of Commerce at that time and had to give a speech. And she started talking about Michael and she just couldn't finish. Um, she looked straight at me and came down off the podium and I just took her out of the room. You know, and she kind of fell apart. And it was just one of those moments. It just made me love Annie. And she was so concerned about her kids. You know, being Woman of the Year didn't mean anything in that moment. You know, it was really what was going on in her personal life. And I just admire her resilience. So it is really special, just all the old stories we hear of like, oh my God, your dad helped me with this and all this. And it's sweet because it's like, it's known as Annie Glass, but that he had a background there too. I can't imagine how hard it would be to go through a divorce and to have kids, but to really be able to step up and become the artist and the businesswoman now and really, you know, manage all aspects of the business. Do all the art, build the brand, do everything to keep Annie Glass afloat and raise two kids. It's a pretty crazy feat that she had, she had to figure out at, at a young age. So, you know, I've always remembered that those times, and I'm always really proud of my mom for what she's accomplished. I have no idea how she did it, but it worked out really great 25 plus years later. <laughs> For other women starting out in business or starting something new, I would say don't be afraid to fail. It, the certain amount of risk is gonna take you so much farther and that, that it's important to fail, it really is. I've certainly done it a lot and listen to yourself. You are your own best advisor at times and when you're out of your depth, go to the people who've already done it. You know, I think the thing about glass making, I probably would have gotten out of this a long time ago if it didn't keep throwing up challenges. It kept me intrigued, you know, it was, and as long as it, it kept giving me challenges, I'd want to have to, I'd have to figure it out, you know, I'd have to be creative and problem solve. But the beauty of glass making was that it only gave me small victories, but it gave me enough of them to keep going.
so it's really not fair. Because it's named Annie Glass, I get all the credit. Um, but the people that have worked here for years and years and have done, taken it away, you know, run away with it. I couldn't make a plate now if I sat down and tried. <laughs> they are so good at what they do. And they've taken it to so many new places. And I'm just so grateful.